Um, so the final speaker for today is actually Dr. Arisara. Dr. Arisara is a cardiologist and instructor of Department of Medicine in Siri Raj Hospital, Mahidol University in Thailand. And she will discuss sensing, arrhythmia detection, and SVT disc discrimination. Dr. Arisara, please. Um, good morning, everyone. And here comes the um, last pre presentations for today. So after you know the indications, you know how to implant. And now you have to know how does the ICD works. So the topic I will present today is about the um, algorithm and things for ICD. Uh, it was talking about the sensing, the arithmetic detections and discriminations. So here, um, what do we expect to see? Uh, need the ICD to detect the ventricular arrhythmia and need to give appropriate therapies when we detect arrhythmia. However, we need to discriminate from SVT because we don't want to have an inappropriate tracks. So for the perfect ICDs, what we aim for? We aim for detecting all ventricular arrhythmias that's mean that we need the ICD to have a very sensitive for the VTs. And of course, like I said, um, the ICD should not treat on the SVT. So it has to inhibit their therapy if it's an SVT. That's mean that it has to have a specific CD for the SVT as well. So for the ICD, it has to have a very accurate sensing. It has to have a good detection criteria and make sure that every criteria were met to diagnose a VT or a VF. Uh, it has to have a good discrimination between VT and SVTs and then give therapies appropriately. So let's do a little bit of review. Um, when we're talking about the sensitivities, it's abilities of the device to see a sense of the intrinsic signals. Comparing if you were um, on the other side of the wall, make sure that you will see everything you want to. So sensitivities is as a wall. And if you raise the wall up too high, you can see less. And if you lower the wall, you can see more. Same thing. Um, when you have a, a VF or a VT coming in, you make sure that the ICDs see it well. Sometimes um, the amplitude of the VF or VT can go up and down. So that's why um, we need to set up the sensitivities as good can. So like I said, raise the wall, you can see it less. Lower the wall and you will see it more. Before going further, you need to know about the leads a little bit. Um, this is the ICD leads. And we detect the um, signals, we call it intracardiac electrogram signals. The ICD leads have tips and rings around here. And we have the coil of the RV or SVC coils here, which is a shocking coil. Why we have to know? Because they have to detect the signals, which is a EGM. We call the near field EGM when the detections come from the tips to ring. And this will represent the activations of myocardium at the tip of the electrode. Same thing, the coil here, the shocking coil here will be able to detect the electrical signals as well. And the shocking coils um, will detect it um, when the the coil to the cans are apart. So it will depict more obvious change in morphologies and it will be resemble the surface ECGs. And this is a, for the example, this is a near field signal and this is a far field signals. And you can see this is sinus rhythm, right? Um, for the near field, when it happened to be a VT, is a very subtle change. It changed though, if you can see the morphology of the near field comparing to both a sinus rhythm and the monomorphic VTs. But you can see that if it's in the far field, it has an obvious change of the sinus rhythm morphology to the VT morphology. So the far field signals give you more change and you can be easily noticed whether it's VT or not VT. So you need to have an accurate um, identify the arrhythmia. And that's mean that the ICD leads must be able to sense a small or large 
R wave. Uh, it has to sense uh, the very small VF signals that following the large R wave. Don't sense the T wave and don't sense the opposite chambers. Don't double sense. And of course, don't sense any noise that coming in. And that means it has to be very sensitive. So during the VF, as you know, the VF is a very um, rapid, low amplitude and sometimes low frequency signals. So um, if you fix the sensitivity or fixing the wall that you can see, and sometimes you can miss some of the VF signal like this. As you can see, the red, the red line is uh, um, the sensitivities wall. In sinus rhythm, the amplitude is pretty much the same, but sometimes in the VT or VF, the amplitudes can go up high and or come very low. So if you have a fixed sensitivities, it might be missed of the detections. So if you miss the detections and come under sensing, it can happen to failure to sense VF and have no therapies or failure to treat VT and can accelerate to have VF and result it can be fatal. So those ICDs have a dynamic sensitivity adjustment. Uh, to make sure that they detect every signal that it should be. And these will be very, um, very sensitive. There's going to be auto adjusting the sensitivity and threshold. So it look um, beat by beat and let the time goes. And then they reset their threshold and then they detect the next beat. Okay, so um, after the algorithm sense that there is the um, Sensing coming in, the intrinsic signal coming in, uh, the threshold start, and when time pass, um, the thresholds drop, and then they have a decay. Make sure that they have a sense to the next threshold here. Okay, and this can prevent them from the T wave over sensing as well. These kind of algorithm we call it dynamic sensitivity adjustment, uh, which have differ from each manufacturers, but every manufacturer of ICD have it. So. In the general principle, it's the same for all ICDs in every companies. Um, the, the name will be different. Like in Boston, they call it automatic gain control. Um, for Medtronic, they call auto adjustment sensitivities. And for the Abbots, they call sensibility or automatic sensitivity control. All of these are the um, dynamic sensitivities um, detections. And for the tachycardia detections, if it's an EKG, if you are all familiar with um, the VTs, of course, you know that it will be a sudden onset. It has a regular YQRS complex tachycardia. It has an abrupt change in QRS axis and morphologies. And for the VF, it also has a sudden onset as well, but it will have a regular YQRS complex tachycardia. And this is the EKG. For the EGM, we need to detect as same as the EKGs but the device needs to detect it well. So it needs to detect whether it's a fibrillations, it's a VT, or it's a sinus rhythm. It has to make sure that it uh, knows right. So they have the criteria for the detections of the ventricular arrhythmia. Uh, these criteria were the rate and durations criteria. Uh, we set up the zones for the detections. We set up the discriminations that make sure that the device to um, the SVT and VT from the onset, the stabilities and the morphologies. And of course, if they have a dual chamber, they will have the AV associations criteria as well. Okay, so when you want to detect um, the VT, right, we know that it's a fast heart rate. So Make sure that they have a rate criteria and duration criteria. They have to know um, how fast the rate is so you um, can set it up. And then you have will set it up how long that, that fast rate coming in. And then you will define the VT or VF. These will be measured from beats to beats. We call it interval or milliseconds or beats per minute. And then we classify into zones, which we call it the VT zones or VF zones. And then we program it of uh, the detections rate. Let's say VT zone, we begin at 162 beats per minute until 188. But if it's more than 188, we call it VF. So we define it ourselves. 
and we classify it into zones. Okay, when we detect these kind of rates and durations, um, they need to have a programmable, which are whether it's a consecutive beats, beats by beats that they were counting that it come in fast. Let's say if it's a consecutive 16 beats in a row that come in fast, it, they will define, oh, it's uh, in the detection zones at the rate that they were, they were set to. So they will call it the consecutive beats, let's say 16 beats in a row. Or it can be uh, probabilistic, which is a percentage or fractions. That's mean that um, you can tell them that, okay, if it's a 16 beats in a row, let's say if it's 12 beats in 16 beats that come in fast, we'll call it and you find it in the detection zone of BT or VF. Like this. This is a consecutive beats counter. As you can see that there are 16 beats in a row that come in fast and the detection criteria is met. And that's mean that if it's met, uh, it will classify it whether it's in a VT or VF, uh, whether which one is in there. And for the um, probabilistic counter, um, they can have like a 12 and 16. You can, you can pro all program, you can make it 8 and 10, 12 and 16, 10 and 20, whatever you can do. Um, it will allow you to detect 12 beats of fast heartbeats in the 16 beats in a row. So you count 1 to 16, and then if there is 12 beats, it's, that it meets criteria of the fast heartbeats it will detect as a VT or VF. And for the wording of uh, sustain or non-sustain, it's uh, the word that you define it to the device as well. So it's not like a real life that you were saying that non-sustain has to be less than 30 seconds, um, no hemodynamic change or something like that. But for the device, it's a defined word that you tell them what you call. So when they said it's not sustained, it means that it doesn't meet the criteria of the VT. And if it's sustained, it might be less than 30 seconds, but um, it's met the criteria of the VT for the therapies. Okay, let's see how does the ICD detects the arrhythmia. Okay, um, first of all, they detect by rates. And with these rates, we program as a zone. It's a cutoff zones. So we can define it into VT or VF zone, like I said in before. And we can tell them that VT zone, we might program in VT1, VT2, and a VF zone to make sure that we have uh, defined a different therapy in each zones. So these are all programmable like this. And then we can tell them that um, we can give them the monitoring zone in the VT1 as well. So you can tell that either zone that you define, whether it's going to have a therapy or it's just have monitoring only. And these will be ba uh, based on rate and number of interval of uh, the arrhythmia. Okay, so in each zones, like I said, you can define each zone, whether you need a treatment or not. If you don't want a treatment, you just put it in a monitoring only. If you want it to overdrive pacing only, you can define it as an ATP only zones. Or you want to have a shocking zone and ATP or overdriving as well, you can also program like that. Um, these zones are for um, patients that have many kinds of rhythm that coming in and then make sure that it have a very good therapy and less pain. Okay, so in each ICD of each companies, you can program into two zones or three zones. This is up to you guys. Or you can program in just only one zone, like in those patients that have rugadas, you know that these patients have VF, right? So they have sinus, which is a normal zone, and then uh, therapy zone at VF only. So this one will be just only one zone. Or some patients have VT and VF, you can define it into two zones, uh, which in the VT zone, you can give overdrive pacing first, and then afterward, you have a shocking following, and then the VF, you have a shocking only, or you can program it uh, in ATP during charging as well. And of course, for the three zones, uh, you have VT1 and VT2 and then VF. 
and this will be more um more programmable like um in vt zone you can put it and like um measurement only or monitoring only and you will see what it goes around there without any therapy at all or you can say this one is for atp only and the vt zone will be atp and then chalk and then we have will be chalk only everything you can decide Okay, like this is the example of one zone that you give just only the VF zone. We turn off the VT zone. So from normal rhythm and go to the VF at more than 200 beats per minute or 188 per minute. It's up to what you program. And then you gave the joules uh, that you want the patients to be shocked. Again, for the two zones, like I said before, that you have defined the VT and the VF zone, you can design as an ATP or overdrive pacing um, three times before you're going into the shocking zones. And you can um, upgrade each shock from like 25, 36, and th two more of the 36 joules. Whatever you can do, you can decide uh, your own therapy here. And for the VF zones, it, it's a shocking zones. Same as the three zones ICD programming. Okay, and here's the um, programmer, and you can see that you can design how, the therapy that you want in each zones. You can choose one zone, two zones, or three zones, and then you just design it. Okay, like this one, um, you have a VT1, VT2, and VF. Okay, and each of one have a 12 consecutive interval of detections. So from here, the device detect that there's a fast heart rate coming in. They count for 12 consecutive beats. Make sure that, oh, it's all fast. Uh, it's 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 hard, um, greater than the detection zones. And then they gave therapy uh, upon which zone that it was in. If it's in VT zone, it will therapy as a VT1. If it's or VT2 zone or either VF zones. After each therapy, they have to make sure that the patients come to sinus rhythm or not, or it's still in arrhythmia. So it has to recheck always um, whether the patient's rhythm is in which side, sinus rhythm yet, or still in VT or VF. If it's in sinus rhythm already, um, it, will, it will call it sinus rhythm, and these will be detection by rates only. So if the rates drop below the detection zones, it will define as a sinus rhythm, even though it's still sinus tachycardia or it's a slow VT, but it's not meeting that zone, it will define as a sinus rhythm because this is how they program. Okay, so here, um, this is a VT after they have the ATP, the, the VT terminates. And then as you can see here, it returned to sinus rhythm. So you detect that there is a bradycardia afterward. And this, they know that the redetections knows that this is the sinus rhythm already. In case it doesn't return to sinus rhythm and the arrhythmia is still going, the more therapy will be delivered. It's upon on which zone it goes in. Okay, so the ICD will again try to determine as a as a rate coming in, if it's the rate meets the VT1, VT2, or VF zone, and it will give the therapy. But the second time that they redetect, it will be um, earlier detection. From the first time that it was a fixed 12th interval of consecutive beats, uh, the redetection will be shorter than that. It can program from 12 down to 6, or in VTs, it can programmable from 6 to 20. And the normal setting is six for the redetection uh, zone. Like this. Um, this is a VT coming in, and it has an ATP going on already. After the ATP, the VT didn't terminate, and they found that um, the the uh, the rate is still fast. So it gives in another um, therapy here as another ATP, and it's only six consecutive beats of detections. Not like the first time, it's a 12. Talking about therapy, they have two 
kind of things for the ICDs. The ICD can shock, of course, because a name, it's a defibrillator. And it has a base of a pacemaker too. So it can overdrive pacing as well, which we call anti-tachycardia pacing. So the shocking therapy, the amount of energy is able to program and the maximum energy is always given to the VF zones. And we can program the maximum energy to appropriate in some VT zones as well. Okay, for the ATP, uh, which is anti tachycardia pacing or overdrive pacing, and this one we can program as well. And uh, we can program it short um, for a one or two, or we can offer an extensive ATP in that zone without any shocks. And for the word cardioversion, it's the same thing as a shocking therapy, but it's going to begin with a lower than a maximum energy shock. Okay, so the ATP that I was mentioned is the same thing as the overdrive pacing, but the overdrive pacing used for the manual wording. So if you pace by your own, you call it overdrive pacing, but if it's auto, you call it anti-tachycardia pacing, which have two modes. They have a burst and ramp. The burst is a consistent pacing um, faster than the base rate of the tachycardia around 10 to 20 percent and you pace for a few seconds you want it to pace to interrupt the tachycardia and make the um, fast heart rate to terminate and slow it down for the ram it's a bit more aggressive um, it's gonna accelerate the electrical pulse in every beat that you pace so it's going to be faster in every single beats for example, like this, this is a VT coming in and you can see that the device can detect a VT already and give the first burst of a consecutive regular um, pacing interval. And the VT doesn't terminate, so a, they give the second burst and you can see that the rate of the pacing was constant and luckily the VT is terminated down to sinus rhythm. Again, this is VT coming in. The device detect and give the burst ATP with a um, constant rate of pacing beats. And this terminate the VT. For down here, if you, you can notice that after the VT initiate and the device give the therapy, each consecutive beats of the pacing, it's faster, faster, and faster. And this we call ramp ATP. Okay, after you know how the ICD works, uh, you need to know that ICD need to have a good SVT discrimination as well. Like we mentioned before that we need the ICD to have a good detection to all ventricular arrhythmia and make sure that it inhibits the treatment if it's an SVT. So these SVT include AFib, a flutter, and sinus tachycardia or SVTs. Uh, we want to make sure that it will not shock upon these diagnosis. And um, because of the detections are based on the rates only and sometimes um, the shock occurs and the patient will feel discomfort, pain, and you will eat up the batteries. For the inappropriate shock, if it does happen, um, it will bring the patients to very painful distress and psychic trauma. Don't ask me how bad it is because I never had a shock before. I just give the shock to the patients, right? But they were defined like it's uh, as hard as a horse kick. Of course, I never been kicked by a horse as well. So I don't know, but it's going to be very bad. But usually these patients, um, if it's a true shock, uh, the patients might be syncope already. So they didn't feel it. But if it's an appropriate shock and the patients in the SVT, they won't like it when they feel that they were shocked or punched out in their chest, of course. And um, in AVID study, there's 22% that the patients receive inappropriate therapies. And of course, the main reasons of the patients that get inappropriate shocks is the SVT, including AFib. 
Okay, so the ICD must have a good sensitive to detect the VT and have a very good specificity so it will not shock on the SVTs. Okay, so for the SVT discriminators, uh, these ICD have to look for rates, both atrium and ventricles. They had to look on relationships of atrium and ventricular events. If it's a dual chamber, it's going to be easy to look at the relations. It has to look at the regularity of the rhythms. It has to look at the onset of the arrhythmias. And it had to look at the shape or morphologies of the QRS complex. So for the beginning of the discriminator, each of the ICD begins with uh, counting. So it counts the um, cycling of either atrial or ventricular rates and define whether which one is faster than which one. And of course, if it's in the dual chamber, you will be able to see if it's AV association or dissociations of um, the atrium and ventricular um, signals. And they need to know the interval of stabilities when you want to know that it's a regular fast heart rate. You need to know that it's stable of each interval interval by interval. And when these arrhythmia occurs, if it's a true VTs, it has to have a fast change in heart rate, right? So these are abrupt change at sudden onset of the, of the tachycardia. And for the VT, again, the morphology and axis usually change. So um, these ICD have to detect the morphology change as well. When they do the rate counting, okay, if they have a dual chamber, they will be easy. So they will detect whether the V or ventricle rate is faster than the atrial rates or not. If it does, it will define as a probably VT. Like this one, you can see that the atrium and ventricular chamber, the ventricular chambers come much faster than the atrial chambers and make that the device detect that this is the VT because the V is more than the A. But if it's a one-one relationship, it's going to be difficult and they might need the next discriminations criteria. For the AV dissociations, um, like this one, uh, is a and the device check and then they know the A is more than V, so it's not going to be VT. But in case of the AFib with RVR, um, sometimes it's going to be hard to, um, it's sometimes it's going to be hard to detect um, whether the the rate that match the criteria already, uh, whether it's a, a VT or 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 AFib with RVR, and that's made it can cause an inappropriate shock. So if you have a dual chamber ICD, um, you, it will be easier for you to have a discriminator in AV dissociation. Next will be the interval stability, like I mentioned before. Um, usually in VT, we call it a regular uh, Y complex tachycardia. So the regularity will tell you that it's a stability of the fast heart rate, comparing to the AFib, which is a regular heart rate. So these will be detected in each interval, whether it's um, how much change in interval from interval to interval as well, and make sure that it's a subtle change or is a lot of change to define it's a stable or it's not stable. Like this. You can see that the fast heart rate coming in. Um, these are the near field and telling you that it's a fast heart rate and it's V more than an A. And you can see that it's a very stable one. So the, sta uh, the interval stability meets the criteria. But for this one, if you know that this is the atrial and the ventricle, if you have a dual chamber ICD like this, uh, the ICD will know that the A is more than the V. So of course, it doesn't meet the criteria for the VT. And if you look at the uh, stabilities, you can see that the ventral signal here, the interval was... Um, not stable at all. So it able to detect that the interval is not stable and it doesn't meet the criteria for the VT and it will define as an AFib. Next will be the onset. Each of the um, tachycardia 
has to discriminate um, how the onset occur. Is it gradual onset or is a sudden onset? For the sinus tachycardia, of course, it's a, a gradual onset of the physiologic response, right? And for the VT, it's a typically sudden onset. So um, looking at the, this, you can compare that when it was in the sinus rhythm and abruptly had a sudden onset of tachycardia, the interval changed abruptly. The way that the interval changed abruptly here makes the discrimination positive for the VT in the term of sudden onset. Again, this is another picture showing you that um, the, there's an abrupt change of rate and it will meet the sudden onset criteria. And if you look further, you can see that the interval of the fast heart rate is very, very stable. Um, so it will meet the um, regularity or stability criteria as well. And since this is the dual chamber ICD, you can see that the atrial and ventricular association was V more than A, and this will all conclude as a VT. And this is similar to that, but this is a single chamber um, ICD. So if you compare this, you can see that this is a sudden onset of a tachycardia, and it comes pretty much stable. Um, no, it's, uh, yeah, so it's a sudden onset of uh, tachycardia. But if you can see here, um, this is the atrial signal. So it's, this is a dual chamber ICD. And this atrial here is um, V more than A. So this is uh, defined as um, VT as well with a criteria of sudden onset, V more than A and stability as well. Okay. This is another example, if you can see in here, which is a far field or um, um, you can see that the ventricular signals come pretty slower than the atrial signal here. So it's uh, A more than V, even though it's a stable one, but um, then you will know that it's a sinus tachycardia. And next and a very important thing is the morphology of the discriminator criteria. Uh, it's about the morphology, how it changed from the template. So when the patient was implanted, the normal rhythm will have a record template. So like you know, if it's an SVT, it comes from atrium down to ventricle. For the morphology, it doesn't change from the uh, sinus rhythm much. So the SVT morphology were similar to the sinus rhythm morphology comparing to the VT, which originated from the ventricle, and usually the morphology is much different. So the way the ICD think, it will store the templates of the baseline sinus EGMs, and it will compare each beat, beat to beat, to see how um, much it's deviate from the baseline. If the QRS that come in fast, match the templates, it will classify as an SVT. But if it's not matched at all, uh, it will classify as a VT. So these crimination criteria, they use many criteria to define, it will, they will not use just only single criteria. So many of the criteria will um, point to whether it's a VT or it's a SVT. This is example. This is a sinus beats coming from atrium down to ventricle. And this is the local EGM at what you can see. When it has a ventricular arrhythmia, you can see that either, uh, although this is um, um, local EGM and it had a subtle change, but if you look into the detail in the sinus rhythm, it goes down first and it goes upward. Okay, but this one, it goes upward first and then go downward. So it changed pretty much. Although it's not a YQRS complex, of course, this is an EGM, not the EKG. So this morphology changed a lot. Okay, so this is how they compare. They compare both near field and far field morphology upon the template and see how much change on both near field and far field templates. And when they look, they will see how many much percentage match. 
Okay, you can see that if it's not match, it will indicate SVT. If it match, it indicates SVTs. And this percentage uh, match of the stored template is very, very low. So this calls VT. Okay, so SVT discriminator by device use um, many criteria um, to meet the diagnosis. They begin with the rate, looking at the onset, stability, and morphology discrimination. If you have a dual chamber ICD, okay, you can see that there is association between rate of atrium or ventricle or not. But if it's just only singles, you cannot use this one. You have to use other criteria to help whether it's a SVT or VTs. After you have meets um, the SVT discriminations and, and about the, uh, the zone setting, like um, uh, we said in the, in the before, we now program at the monitoring zones, VT1, VT2, or VF. Okay. Usually for the VF zone, I mentioned a little bit before, uh, we use it for the single zone for the patients that we sure that they're going to have VF only like those patients that have rugadas or long QTs with uh, polymorphic VTs. The, usually these patients were very young and we don't want to have the VT zones to make them have an appropriate shock. For other ischemic or non-ischemic patients, uh, we can put them into VF and VT zones and how many VT zones upon um, your patients. And if you want to have one of the zones to be monitoring zones, you can do it as well. Okay, so for our conclusions for today, um, how does the ICD work? It works automatically. It has to have a very good sensing for the EGM signals. Then after they detect an abnormal fast signals, um, it looks if it's the rate and duration meets the criteria or not. The detection zone meet the criteria. And of course, don't forget the SVT discrimination. The single and dual chamber has a little bit difference of the more discriminate in the A and V. And then after they detect, they give therapies of either shocks or um, anti-tachycardia pacing. After they gave therapy, they come back again to re-detect and make sure that uh, they don't miss uh, arrhythmia if the therapy is not success. And of course, for last of all, um, these ICD have a pacing function as well. So it all also can be had a, a backup bradycardia mode and also have a backup post-shocking pacing too. Because after shocking, sometimes the the heart is stunning and it doesn't have a fast or um, appropriate heart rate. So the uh, post-shock pacing can help it out for a few seconds to minutes. And after that, after the, um, the heart is recovered, it's going to come back to their, their own um, rate. So this will be all for um, the ICD, um, the ICD automatic function and how does the ICD thinks. So now it's up to you guys to make sure that you have a good setup to the patients and make sure that the patients will not receive any inappropriate shocks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arizwa, for your informative lectures and teaching us how to read the, the episode. Uh, Dr. Shuang, do you have any uh, uh, things you want to add on to this uh, topic? Thank you, Dr. Arisara. Um, nope, absolutely a fantastic talk. I've not much to add, but we have a couple of questions here from uh, the participants. Um, one of the uh, question is, what is the difference in terms of SVT discrimination um, of single versus dual chamber ICDs? Um, okay, um, actually the discrimination, like I mentioned, they look at onset, they look at, um, at first, they look at the rate, right? After the rate meet criteria, they, may, they have to make sure that this rate is SVT or VT by looking at their stabilities, regularity of it. They look at the onset, make sure that it's a sudden onset or gradual onset. And they look at the um, 
the morphologies, right? But for the single and dual chamber, the differences is the atrium and ventricular signal. For the uh, for the single chambers, you don't have any atrial signal to discriminate whether it's V more than A or A more than V. So uh, for the dual chamber to be answered, it's going to be better discrimination if you have an atrial arrhythmia together with these patients. Let's say these patients have AFib or A flutter along with their VTs. If uh, you have only just single chamber, it's a very hard to discriminate whether it's going to be AFib with RVR uh, or uh, flutter two to one versus a real VT. So um, if you have a dual chamber, you can differentiate it with A more than V or V more than A. That's all. Other thing will be the same. Okay. Thank you. Um, a second question here will be in your practice, um, what do you usually set the stability and onset criteria to? Um, usually, it's it's depend whether um, it's a primary prevention or a secondary prevention. First of all, I mainly set up the rate first. Okay, um, I do calculate the maximum heart rate of the patients. Let's say the patient is thirty years old, Brugada you're going to feel that uh, the maximum heart rate will be 220 minus their age, right? So their maximum heart rate will go 190s. So like these kind of patients, it goes up very, uh, very high. I have only single zone of VF and then make sure that it's not going to get inappropriate child because these patients are very active. Uh, I will not do anything with, uh, um, well, I will do default for the um, stability and the onset criteria because usually these patients is a VF and I, the zone is more important. Um, for the VTs, um, those non-ischemic or ischemic patients that I know that they have VT already for the secondary prevention, I will define the rate of their VT first, make sure that I cover up their VT rates. If it's not a slow VT, that's gonna be easy. And after that, I, I will see that uh, what is the default. Usually I go by the default first. And if it does have a false shock or um, misdiagnosis, then I will modify it later. Um, usually um, for the sudden onset, I will use the sudden onset more than stabilities. Yes. Thank you. Jeremy, do we have time for one more question maybe? Yes, please. Um, so there's a question here, perhaps uh, Dr. Yu can, can answer this. Um, is there any specific criteria that you use in your practice to decide between implanting a single versus a dual chamber ICD in your patients? Uh, Dr. Yu, uh, please unmute your, yourself. Or how about uh, Dr. Rizzo, or can also comment on this Okay, um, yes. So uh, between the dual coil and a single coil, because I'm an, one of the extractor, I found that a dual coil is more risky. So I will use a dual coil as needed. That's mean that if the patient is a secondary prevention, I will use a dual coil for them. But if it's a primary prevention, or it's a very young age patients, I will usually use a single coil. And I will make sure that when I implant, if I use a single coil, the RV coil will go against the septums and make sure that it will, should be always work. Yes. How about Dr. Cha, your practice? Um, so, I, I mean, I completely agree with Dr. Arisara. Um, I think with regards to the question about single versus dual chamber ICD. I think um, the most glaring um, indication for dual chamber ICD will be a patient who fulfills criteria for an ICD, be it primary or secondary prevention, as well as the patient having requirements for pacing. So for example, if it's someone with a complete heart block and also has a poor LV ejection fraction then someone like that will probably benefit from a dual versus a single chamber ICD. And uh, all the other um, criteria will then be on an individual patient's basis. But the, the, the most 
important will be someone who needs both pacing as well as uh, DFib functions will benefit from a dual chamber ICD or even a CRT for that matter. So, so that's that's the practice uh, that that I have. So I, I think um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all uh, three speakers um, for the excellent session that we had this morning, um, and also to thank all participants for um, tuning in. I'll now hand over to Jeremy uh, to close the sessions and settle any logistics issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Cha, for um, uh, leading uh, this uh, today's webinars, and of course, uh, all our speakers. Uh, Dr. Rizera, Dr. Van, and Dr. Yu for all your effort in preparing for all these uh, informative uh, lectures. And of course, all our attendees today, thank you very much for your time. Uh, before um, um, I, I pass the time to uh, Dr. Chan for do, giving us a uh, closing remarks, uh, so I just would like to uh, advertise uh, for our next uh, ICD part two, which is on 19th of September. And um, there are other uh, lectures, uh, which is more focusing on the, the programming part. So for today's uh, Dr. Rizzo already mentioned about um, some of the arrhythmia uh, therapy. So we're going to, to give more to give you more details about the setting on all those uh, algorithms and also how to manage ICD storms. I hope I can see you uh, on uh, next uh, two weeks later, the Saturday next two weeks later. Um, so now, Dr. Uh, Chan, we have any uh, final message for our audience, for all of us? Uh, no real final message, but uh, a very big thank you to everyone. And I hope that uh, all of us keep safe during this period and uh, hope to see one another again real soon somewhere um, for yeah. a proper conference. <laughs> not not on right. a computer, yeah, but <laughs> face to face. All right. Thank you and have a very, very mm -hmm. happy weekend, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.